All right, we're going to continue our work with solving one-step equations by looking at a challenge problem and then also looking at a real-world connection. Uh, what, I, what I encourage you to do first is to pause the video right now and try both of these problems on your own, see if you can get them, and then unpause and follow along as I go ahead and explain the solution. Okay, so let's look at the one on the left first. We have a 4x over 3 is equal to 16. And the, I guess that what makes this a challenge, I think, is to see if you can solve it in just one step. And so what I want to remind you of is our work we've done with reciprocals. And we can just multiply by the reciprocal of the 4 thirds. And so what that will do, that will, these threes will cancel, these fours will cancel, and we'll, we are left with just an x on the left side. And then we need to think about what 16 times 3 fourths is. That's something that you can do in your, in your head with a little mental math, I think. What's 1 fourth of 16 is, is 4, so 3 fourths of 16 is going to be 12. And as a quick check, we can do is 4 times 12 over 3 is that equal to 16? 4 times 12 is 48 over 3. Yep, it is equal to 16, so it checks out. All right, then let's take a look at this real-world connection here. And this is a um, completely true problem with, with accurate numbers, and um, it's a true scenario that I've encountered recently. So this involves one of my favorite mountains in the world called Green Mountain. It's just outside of Boulder. I'm sure many of you have seen it. And it's famous for the flat irons uh, being on the east face of this mountain. And these flat irons have numbers. This is the first flat iron, the second, they're numbered from right to left. The third is the most famous, the fourth, the fifth, and there are many other flat irons that have um, non numerical names as well. Um, there are probably dozens of named flat irons on Green Mountain and Bear Peak and South Boulder Peak. And this, by the way, is Chautauqua, which is a beautiful uh, meadow just outside of Boulder with lots of trails. And I like to hike up Green Mountain quite a bit. I start right down in here at Gregory Canyon and uh, I follow a trail that kind of goes up past what's called the amphitheater, uh, kind of sneaks behind the, the first flat iron and then curls around and gets to the summit um, from kind of the north and west side. It's about two miles up, uh, maybe a little over 2,000 feet. So it takes a while, it's kind of slow going. And there's a point on this trail that I've started to notice. I, I do this a lot, I hike up this trail a lot. There's a point right there. There's a little wooden platform, a little wooden bridge you go over. And I, I've realized that I, when I time myself, see how fast I can go up Green Mountain, I get to this point typically in about 35% of my total ascent time. Okay, so it doesn't really matter how fast I'm going, I get to that point on the trail right about after 35% of my total time. And on one particular day, I just recently, I timed myself and I got to that spot on the trail after 19 minutes and 45 seconds of going, of going up green. And I was curious, how could I use that information to predict my total ascent time? Okay, so let's, let's do a little bit of math here to try to solve this problem. One, one tip I have for you when you're dealing with a real-world connection or a real-world world, real world word problem is to actually look for the question mark. It's right there, and that is going to help you define your variable. Okay, what's your predicted ascent time? We don't know, so we're going to call that x. And let's actually define our variable here. So let's let x equal our predicted time. Okay, and from there what we'll do is use x to write an, um, to write an equation. Let's turn our mathematic or turn our, our word problem into a mathematical sentence. Okay, and what I can see right here is this 35% of my ascent time. So I'm going to write that in mathematical language, 35% is 0.35, of often means times, and x we just said is my predicted ascent time. And that's gonna equal 19 minutes and 45 seconds. Okay, so a 
common mistake at this point is to consider this as 19.45, okay? But 45 seconds is out of 60, and the 0.45 is out of, uh, or those are hundredths out of a full single unit. So let's, let's figure out what that might be here. And that's 19 and 45 sixtieths, which I think you can probably see or maybe use a calculator is 19.75, okay? So then we're gonna go ahead and uh, solve for x. We have everything set up so far. Let's undo the multiplication times 0.35. We'll undo that by dividing both sides by 0.35. And then the nice thing about that is it cancels out those 0.35s on the left. We have just an x remaining. And I have a 19.75 divided by 0.35. And I get a 56, I'll round to a couple decimal places, 0.43, all right? So you might think again that this is 56 minutes and 43 seconds. It's not, it's 56 minutes and 43 hundredths of a second. So let's find out, or 43 hundredths of a minute. Let's find out how many seconds that is. We will do 0.43 times 60 seconds in a minute. and I get 25.8 seconds. So my final answer here is going to be 56 minutes and about 26 seconds. And I forget what, on that actual day I, I was tracking here, I forget what my actual exact ascent time was, but I bet it was within a minute or two of what we just calculated. So there's my solution right there, and that's a good place to stop.